I'm Roxy Stryer. That's Ben Bateman. He's my boyfriend. He always wears a suit. I'm in PJs because I'm a normal person and it's close to bedtime. Yeah, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? I'm in a suit. <laughs> so we're here to give you guys a review of Justice League. The embargo was dropped, and this is going to be a non-spoiler review. No so spoilers. if you haven't seen it yet, that's okay. We're not going to ruin anything for you. First of all, overall thoughts? Uh, I thought it was really, really fun, and more than anything, we had the most awesome viewing experience of this movie. We got to go watch it on the Warner Brothers lot on uh, Wednesday of last week. And it was a private viewing. There was like five of us. It was DC Movie News, me, and like a couple other people that we knew from media. And it had scheduled it literally because we had uh, interviews with Ray Fisher, with Cyborg, coming up the next day, which you can find on uh, Black Hollywood Live and Popcorn Talk. And really, really great guy. Great interviews. I may or may not have lost my gun in the middle of the screening. It's fine. I found it three hours later in between my watch and my wrist. The Flash obviously put it there really quickly. Don't know what he has against me. It's a very heroic move. Uh, incredibly difficult to do, so hats off to my girl Roxy. If you can't tell by my smile, I'm so excited to be talking about this film, finally, because, gosh, I really, really liked it, which is so great to finally say about a DC film. Yes, I loved Wonder Woman as well, but I just feel like we're on this upward trend. Some incredible characters, and that was my favorite part, how they really broke down these characters, like... Ray Fisher, yeah, Cyborg. Yeah, I didn't feel let down by any of the characters, so why don't we just kind of shot out of the camera review of each character, how we felt about him. So starting with Ray, he was great. He just had the right tone, the right vibe. They took a New 52 approach to him instead of a Teen Titans go. He was not comic relief at all. He's very stoic. Doesn't get a lot of moments in the movie, um, but the moments he does get, he uses well, and I'm, I'm excited to see more Cyborg. Very, very poignant. Everything he says matters, and I really appreciated that. He blew me away, so I was excited about him. Gal Gadot, as always. Uh, out of the park, oh my gosh, is she my idol. There's one scene where she's just the most badass of all badass that there's ever been, and it's like, gosh, she's she killed it. Yeah, I mean, the, the DCEU prior to Gal Gadot was like a 500 basketball team in Milwaukee. Basically, she was like adding an all-star point guard and moving to Los Angeles. That's what she's done for this franchise, and she continues to win games in this movie. Absolutely. Who else is winning games? Batflick. Gotta give it to him. He really shows up to play. He has aged a little bit. He's a little more grizzled. He's been at this for a long time. He may or may not be tired of it, but I love watching him. I just love it. He turned out to be a very good casting choice. Strange decision to visibly age him in the movie. Like, Ben Affleck is not a young guy at this point. He's in his mid-40s. But, uh, you know, movie star magic could make him look like he's in his mid-30s if they wanted. They choose not to. It's odd to have sort of what feels closer to a Dark Knight Returns Batman than kind of a year one Batman. But it is what it is. I wonder what it means for the future of him. But I do like his scenes a lot. I'm still all in on him. And who else I'm all in on is Aquaman. Yes! Yes! From the trailers and everything, he, I thought he was going to be my favorite going into this. And he certainly was one of my favorites. Every time he's on screen, he surprises me. Yeah. And I love being surprised by him. He has some of the funniest moments in the movie. Uh, and it's like we're laughing at him, not with him necessarily. Yeah. But that's pretty great. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, how, how do you not want to see Khal Drogo in this movie? He's as manly and ripped and just cool as you could possibly want. He has an awesome jacket, a sweet trident. He's, he's great. And I, the Aquaman movie is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I would say... There's, you know, we'll talk about sort of the secret character as it were, but let's just finish the remaining six quickly. Ezra Miller, what do you think? This guy right here. I have to be perfectly honest with you guys. I've been reading a lot of reviews saying he steals the movie, and I'm glad that some people think that about him, <laughs> but I don't necessarily feel that way. I love the actor. I've seen him in plenty of things, and I think that he's wonderful, but this character missed the mark for me. He was slightly annoying, and I think that was on purpose. Uh, but for me, it didn't quite work. Uh, it's odd because the CW Flash, I felt Ari was like a departure from the sort of the Flash that I expected I was going to see when they put him on TV or in a movie at this point. Barry this, Allen? Yeah, and this is even a further departure from Barry Allen than I imagined. Growing up, I always thought of Barry Allen as very like square-jawed American, kind of less like a less renegade Hal Jordan. This is so not that. He makes reference even in the movie to being like a nice Jewish boy. It's just like he's very comic relief. Um, and obviously they had to choose which character they were going to do that with. This is the one they wanted. Ezra's well cast for it. I didn't dislike him. Um, he just didn't 
steal the show. It's probably unfair because I'm such a huge Grant Gustin fan, so I know people are loving him, and I don't want to knock it too much. Uh, Superman. We can't really talk about him so much because, as we said, there's no spoilers, and anything we can talk about with him has to do with the spoilers. So the one thing I will say is... I have a feeling you guys are going to be as happy as I am with how they handled the Superman situation. I mean, look, guys, if you paid any attention to the press, you know that Henry Cavill is doing press for this movie. So there's a reason. Uh, there's a great fist pump moment. That's as much as I'm going to say. It's awesome. Go see the movie. Henry Cavill is a great Superman, and you won't walk away from this feeling any different than that. His abs have abs. His abs have abs. True story. <laughs> Uh, so the big elephant in the room going into this was, are Joss and Zach's styles going to blend well? How is that going to work? Well, I'm here to tell you that for me, they nailed it. It yeah. blended perfectly, effortlessly, seamlessly, and where one person may or may not have lacked, the other person picked up the slack. So I'm saying that in both directions. I really loved the way that they came together and made such a strong film. It's very strange to think about Batman versus Superman and the Avengers and then think about what sort of happens if you try to join those two things. The self-seriousness that you worry could be there is sort of overwritten at certain times by that Joss Whedon humor, that pop culture sort of fun, irreverent. And it works 60-70% of the time. Some of the times it's like we're trying a little hard to get a laugh at this moment. No big deal. But overall, pretty fun. This movie would, I would describe this movie as fun more than any other word. And I don't mean that in a negative way. People use that word negatively because they don't want to be honest. This movie was legitimately a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. And for me, it worked more than it did for you with the humor. I really liked it. Something else I really liked, the music. The pacing was so great. It's two hours and one minute, and they made every second count. And I really feel as if the music had a lot to do with that. The cinematography, it was beautiful. So gorgeously shot. Uh, you just wanted to watch more. As we've talked about uh, off-screen, the villain. Yep. Not the best. Left a little to be desired, but it didn't matter because this movie wasn't about that. It's about the Justice League and bringing the Justice League together. Yeah, a couple of the thoughts. Um, Mr. Gordon, good to see. Not in the movie a lot. A lot of fun to see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I love the act. I love J.K. Simmons. So, I love uh, him too. Uh, that was good. And then I think last but not least probably is the fact that there's two post credit scenes you guys need to stay to watch. The second one especially was... Possibly my favorite moment of the entire movie. So. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Top five moment for sure. And whoa, blind, mind blown. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Blind so. moan? Mind blown. Blind moan. Blind, blind moan. moan. So. Yep, so on that note, that pretty much nailed. Stuck the landing right there. Go see Justice League. <laughs> really liked it. Definitely a movie that I'm going to see again on opening night. And I'm so excited for all of these standalones. You guys can keep the conversation going with me by finding me at Roxy Stryer. You guys can find me at Ben Baby Media. And listen to Roxy and watch Roxy on DC Movie News every single week. And she talks about this stuff all the time. And she knows the world about DC. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks I don't know for... about the world. Like maybe a city or two. She knows a lot. Metropolis. She knows a lot. I'm yeah. she's a DC girl. All right, guys. Bye.